as you know that India has a big coastline of 7,800 kilometers. A lot of construction activities are taking place in and around uh, the coastline, typically 50 kilometers inland. And uh, being high humid area and lot of salinity in the air, so all the steel infrastructure that is prone to the corrosion. So that was the purpose to call you to um, uh, appeal to the specifiers because if media says something, then specifiers generally take note of that. So if you can mention that uh, in all the public infrastructure, the galvanized steel should be used because generally what is happening, you have seen that the steel is getting painted and after every two or three years, government again spend a lot of money on repainting of those steel infrastructure, be it a bus station or be it a photo work bridge or any any uh, other thing. So uh, why not being a taxpayer, we should ask government to go for a long-term sustainable solution and uh, you are free to ask any question during our interaction. Professor Pillay can give you uh, the actual position of Chennai and also Mr. Tommy Sadestian, he have got solution for uh, residential, uh, you know, uh, problems and how you can beautify your house. So, Professor Pillay, if you want to speak something. Thank you, uh, Rahul and uh, Tommy, for this opportunity and to Isa Day for <laughs> giving me this chance. Yes, so I think, uh, you know, the first question which I would like to ask uh, is how long, uh, what is the typical life for, you know, for let's say new structure? You know, everyone all under, is it okay? Yeah. yeah. So, what is the life which you really expect from a concrete structure? Yes. 50 years, yeah. what type of structure? General structure. Like building uh, buildings or uh, bridges, roads? Buildings. 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 So 50 years. So can you think of a structure which is with made with steel reinforced concrete, which is having no issues for the last 50 years? No corrosion should be there. It's very difficult to find structures where uh, we do not do much of maintenance work like you know yes there will be structures but we have already invested a lot of money on maintaining that so that's what we call as cost of corrosion maintaining means you know major repair because of corrosion so we remove the concrete cover put new concrete and then remove the steel or you know, uh, add more steel reinforcement, etc., etc., and this also create a lot of indirect cost. So, what is indirect cost? Sometimes indirect cost is more than the direct cost, uh, and uh, the reason is mainly because uh, you know, let's say you stop usage of a building or a bridge, people have to go around, and you know, the more time you will spend on in car rather than actually either at home or in office. You know, so those kind of things can be. Uh, avoided if we have whatever we build if it is lasting for longer time as you expect so we call that life as service life or target service life every mile of the last uh, last part on the money like no so uh, if you say 50 years for the 50 years i should not be doing any structural repair just like we change cloth every day painting is fine because that is more, more to do with the aesthetics of the uh, structure. We change cloth every day, but our bone and flesh, we don't change every day. So we are talking about bone and flesh. When you talk about concrete structure, the main concept of uh, today's discussion is mainly not the cosmetic stuff, but the skeleton of the building. This, you know, the beams, columns, roof element, those are the things which we are like Chennai, you know, we have, see, what are the main causes for corrosion is uh, you have chlorides from the seawater, airborne chlorides are there, 
and then uh, you know so if you go to some of the building in the cost line you will see one side is having a lot more problem than the other side of the same building you will see that so the reason is because you have this chlorides coming from uh, carried by the air the chlorides from the sea water so that's uh, that's one major reason another reason is the carbon dioxide where is carbon dioxide coming from all the vehicles which we have exhaust so wherever the concrete structure they are all mostly on ground ground level carbon dioxide is high where you have the buildings or where you have the bridges so these are two major reasons for corrosion to happen chlorides and carbon dioxide of course oxygen uh, you know water all that is also uh, you know play important things but uh, for concrete structures this we consider as the two major things which we lead to uh, corrosion uh, but now coming back to the normal so we know this uh, it's a coastal city so we have a problem because of that now also ground water see if you look very carefully you know like some of the buildings which were built very early they don't have problems but the newer ones have problem that is because mostly i think it is because of the water the bore well which we use for construction bore well will have chlorides that uh, sorry uh, the water from the bore well that might have chlorides so because of all these reasons we are you know given concretes which are probably not as good as uh, expected in the written documents uh, so what do we do one way is to make sure that the water which we use doesn't have chlorides sometimes it might become expensive sometimes it might be very difficult also. other is improve the quality of the concrete which we make and other option is use better quality steel so how do we improve the quality of the steel so if you ask people generally say put some coating or stainless steel rebar stainless steel rebar means it's going to be very very Costly. costly you can't even afford that okay so a little cheaper option is to go with some kind of coating so that the uh, you know the coating will protect the steel from corrosion the thin layer uh, on the rebar that will protect the steel from corrosion now what type of material we can use for coating that's also very important if you just put paint on the rebar it won't work why it will not work because paint pannum bodu even though with your naked eyes you may it may look very good but a microscope look kuda paatha there will be lot of holes in that so the water molecules the chloride molecules uh, oxygen molecules or you know, all these will penetrate through that thing chinna chinna crack irukku adu microscope paatha dhaan theriyum இப்போ இப்போக்சி கோட்டட் ரீபார் அதெல்லாம் அந்த லாட் ஆஃப் इश्यूज ஆர் देयर வித் சச் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் ரீபார்ஸ் இப்போக்சி கோட்டட் ரீபார்ஸ் बिकॉज इट्स अ பாலிமரிக் மெட்டீரியல் when you put that rebar out in the sun just for 2 3 weeks if you let it exposed to sunlight it will crack you may not be able to see it with naked eye but if you put it in a microscope very clearly we will be able to see that so the coating should not be a soft material and also in a construction site you know do we handle rebars like babies which yes or no 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 we just throw them away you know i have even seen uh, you know back hose in the jcb parked on the rebars epoxy coated rebars so they will if you look very carefully next time when you see this green color bar is what i am talking about everywhere we see you know sometimes this green color bar so those bars those coatings will have lot of scratches on them lot of scratches will be there it will be peeled off all sorts of uh, issues like that is there in the evening i am going to cover i'll show you some nice uh, photographs and all that uh, to showcase this problem we are really you know i say it is criminal sometimes to you to uh, allow this kind of inferior products uh, you know so the person who is approving should also ensure that the prescription is properly followed on site you know it's not just say something and then uh, use something uh, so careful la irukano adha konjam enna enna mari materials use pannala adha 
and the site is it good for civil engineer see i am not saying epoxy coating is bad i am not saying that problem is at the factory it might be good by the time it reaches a construction site and by the time concrete comes in contact with it by the time we put the concrete on that rebar and the steel rebar or epoxy coated bar by that time it gets damaged so that processing with the product so we were thinking like you know how to avoid or get rid of this problem one option is to go for a coating which is very cheap uh, money is definitely a thing but which is not very soft if you walk over that it should not scratch so metallic coating is the one option or a coating which is very hard but it should not crack when you bend the bar it should not crack so that's also another and it should not get damaged when it is exposed to sunlight these are some of the three four things which uh, you know are important to look at when you talk about coated rebars any paint if you put on the rebar it's actually going to create more problem than advantage we have studied actually in the if, if the coating is not good you will actually spend more money and get inferior products in one of the phd thesis in iit madras we found that life can decrease by 70 percentage if you don't use proper coating if you use this uh, epoxy coating with the crack a scratch on that so it, it's very very important to it's like this you have a shirt if everywhere i have holes then i'll get good <laughs> air inside no you don't feel that same like that so you cannot have cracks on the coating so this metallic coating uh, one of the widely used metallic coating all over the world is galvanized coating okay simple example if you want to know what it is at your home we put this uh, earthing pipe there you know for electric short circuit right uh, that earthing pipe what is the metal used on that you must it's it's a iron pipe with zinc coating zinc coating so that's what is galvanized this is probably the very first why it is used because my objective is to protect that iron pipe zinc will corrode before the iron corrodes so we say galvanized iron pipe so chala electrical post chala you will see this grayish color no that is galvanized iron so why because the zinc will or the zinc will corrode before the steel corrodes so there is a competition between steel and zinc who will corrode first <laughs> okay who or who will sacrifice first so zinc will always uh, corrode before the steel corrodes this is the main reason why we connect zinc and steel and here when you talk about a rebar if you think uh, about the if suppose this is a rebar and you have very thin layer of coating so the amount of volume required for the zinc volume required is very less right so because of that see because the corrosion happens only on the surface not inside the steel so i don't have to put thing you know change the steel rebar into zinc bar it is not required and it's very costly so we go for a targeted uh, approach saying that i need only surface to be coated so that my cost of the rebar is less and at the same time i get better performance or better corrosion resistance now for simple note if you tell uh, for a steel rebar if we say uh, amount of chloride required to initiate or to start corrosion if we say one unit or 1 gram chloride one and then another okay for steel to start corroding in case of zinc coated rebar you will require about two times 2x okay so and avlo chloride to get accumulated inside the concrete it will take much longer time so this is why we are talking about uh, use of zinc coated or galvanized steel bars for concrete main idea is to delay the onset of corrosion if a normal structure it takes 50 years you keep everything else same just change the bar 
you might get 100 years of life. Okay, might. I am not saying like, but definitely it is not 50 to 60. It's not. You get much more than uh, more life. That is possible. Only thing is change. Because, see, there are some things which you cannot really change overnight. Like if you say concrete quality, it depends on the person, the type of cement you use, type of aggregates you use, type of all the raw materials Mixing. which you use and the mason. And, uh, you know, uh, if the concreting is happening in the night, the daytime, depends on a lot of factors play a role in getting the quality concrete. But steel is a manufactured uh, you know, it's manufactured in a controlled environment, like in a steel plant. So where coating is also done in a controlled manner. So you can actually ensure better quality in terms, uh, when it comes to steel. It, it is possible, better quality control is possible. Okay. So, uh, I mean, I will keep on talking like this. Uh, so the one thing I would say definitely, uh, you know, the cost of corrosion uh, as per the reports, it's about a 3 to 5 percentage of the gross domestic product GDP, it says. Now, but I would say that this 3 to 5 percentage is based on the very, very limited data available. I was involved in collecting uh, data for that report in uh, one of the, uh, in, in 2015, we did some survey. <coughs> And uh, there were, uh, you know, the main question was, ask every company who were participating in that uh, survey, we asked a question, do you have a person in your company who deals with corrosion management? And you won't believe people actually walked out of the survey. So, see, for example, if you talk about a pipeline or offshore structures and all that, uh, there is a uh, more risk is involved. Civil structures, like you know, we say we'll manage it like that, no? so that the perception on the risk is very less. So we we believe that risk is very, uh, we think that risk is a little less as compared to other industries. So that is why we don't have you know corrosion management people uh, in many of the civil civil. But slowly, slowly things are changing. I think we will. Uh, you know, we will eventually we will have. Now only we are talking about durability, service life, and we are now only thinking. So definitely, when we are realizing these needs, we will actually probably have pe person whose job is to ensure that the structures are durable. You know, so uh, that it's durability is come becoming more and more important because <coughs> nowadays we are uh, investing or rather. Uh, yeah, we are investing a lot more money on making the structures more durable and more corrosion resistant. Uh, so this this kind of needs are going to increase, uh, and also like you know, uh, initial investment. If you put a little bit extra money in the beginning, capital, if you put a little bit extra money, if you can get uh, you know double the life, there's nothing better than that. No, like you know. Uh, we always say that uh, there is no sustainability without durability. Uh, so whenever we construct something, we should think how my, like how long I can extend that structure to last for without demolishing it. So that's a very key uh, concept. Uh, you know, no sus sustainability cannot be achieved without durability of the structure. Okay, now I'll, uh, maybe I'll talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> so, now I'll request Mr. Tommy Celestian to brief us that how is making our life, you know, more happier. So, zinc doesn't not necessarily use the only infrastructure, but also in residential applications. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, let me thank Rahul for inviting me for this uh, meeting. Now, Professor Pillay has in detail explained about the loss due to corrosion. Now that is primarily about steel structures. But in our day-to-day -day life, the loss is actually much more because steel is not the only material we use. And we are talking specifically about the interior, your home interiors. The most commonly used material inside your home is actually wood. Your cupboards, your furniture, your doors, your windows, everything is manufactured in wood. 
and uh, again the concept of cost of ownership you have spent x amount of money to create that now for the next 20 years 30 years or 40 years when you're going to use that residence you need to keep on spending money and the reason is uh, you know it's a fight against the weathering elements of nature corrosion put in simple terms is basically oxidization of metal steel is primarily iron iron in its natural condition exercises iron oxide so nature has a tendency to bring back things to equilibrium same thing happens to wood or people or whatever you know after a certain period of time nature brings it back to the elements wood the main problem which people face is actually termites i am sure most of the people here in their residences or you know in their you know near circle friends family etc would have seen the cost of uh, the uh, problem of termite infestation you can see doors getting uh, uh, eaten away by termites you can see kitchens wardrobes etc being eaten away by termites so uh, we uh, as a company uh, we started looking at this from a different perspective we were actually doing uh, things in another material uh, we, we provide interior solutions to customers and when we saw that okay one of the factors which is preventing in increasing uh, the conversion from wood to more sustainable material is actually cost now galvanized iron is actually one of the lowest cost options available which can increase the life of a product substantially uh, one of the reasons why galvanized iron is so popular is because actually the protection which zinc affords to steel is actually an electrochemical process uh, they call zinc the mother of steel the reason is because zinc sacrifices itself over a period of time protecting iron it's called uh, uh, I think professor Fuller, yeah, sacrificial. cathodization or sacrificial yeah. protection Cathodic. and Cathodic. one big uh, like professor Pillay said you know the problem with painting is that if you have a scratch on the paint you will see that area get corroded the big advantage of zinc is that the protection is actually electrochemical. Even if there is a scratch and if the steel is exposed, still because of the electrical nature of protection, the steel will still be protected by zinc. Now, uh, like I said, you know, the other material which is predominantly used in home construction or home interiors is wood. And uh, off late, if you see, you can see a lot of presence of uh, uh, steel structures you know the door frames and doors etc being manufactured on local levels and the wooden structures are getting replaced organized players like you know uh, Tata's and uh, Jinder, JSW etc they have also launched their brands called uh, Tata Pravesh how many of you have heard of it I don't know but Tata Pravesh is one thing uh, I mean I was talking to someone in the industry and I was surprised that they have their own factory but the demand is so high that they have actually contracted many other factories to manufacture Tata Pravesh. Which means there is actually a huge problem which customers are facing as individuals. You know, if you invest in a house, let us say 50 lakhs, 60 lakhs, whatever, and you have to then, you know, supplement it after five years to replace the doors and windows or replace the cupboards. And it is not only the replacement cost. I have come across people who have actually kept, you know, Kanji Brahm sarees into a, in, inside a wardrobe. You don't use it very frequently. Two years, three years down the line, they want to go for a marriage. They take it out and they find it is all eaten away by termites. So the cost of this is actually very high. And the incremental cost, like Professor Pule said, if you are able to spend that incremental cost over a wooden kitchen or a wooden wardrobe or a wooden door, then the life which you get out of it is much longer than that incremental cost which you are going to incur. Another thing which we want to dispel is many people feel that okay steel it will be industrial kind of looking ugly you know we prefer wood with nice varnishing it is actually very easy to finish you get beautiful colors but what we've done is that we have actually applied treatments to the uh, steel structure which gives you a quality which is actually as good as any of the best in the industry. Uh, I mean, I don't know how much time we have, otherwise I could show you some of the images of the kitchens which we're talking about, so that you get a feel of what we're talking about. Uh, 
I would request Gaurav to, if we can. You move the projector. Oh, you removed it. Okay, sorry. <coughs> so the point is that if you're looking for long, durable solutions, then metal is the way to go. And when we combine that with the cost effectiveness of the material, GI actually has no competition. Uh, we work with other material also, like stainless steel. Stainless steel, 1 kg is 300 rupees. GI is 60 rupees. You can see the huge differential in the price, which will give you similar results as stainless steel. So uh, I think that is it from me. Uh, if you have anything which you want to know, please feel free to ask. So the question is that the government should take initiative regarding this building. In my structure, you make sure, like, you know, people will always take the steel from that, right? You know, because you can recycle it and make new steel products. With it. So that, that way, sustainability, if you look, really look at the steel, is considered to be very sustainable uh, material, even if. Uh, you know, the embodied energy sometimes we say that is uh, high in case of steel. But uh, if you look at all the aspects together and for the whole life cycle, uh, you know, then uh, probably steel, steel is considered to be very uh, sustainable in nature. Because once you take it out of the earth, you can keep on using it again and again uh, for the uh, new and uh, new products. Yeah, the government should take a policy decision. No? No, government should take policy decision to make uh, people to use galvanized steel. Uh, yeah, see, the policy decisions, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, I mean, we are working towards uh, that because especially when you talk about uh, this for the concrete infrastructure, uh, we keep telling that, you know, uh, adopt materials which will last long even though like the initial cost may be a little uh, higher uh, but the life cycle cost usually when we compare cost no like you know uh, we should not really only look at the say, of course you have to look at initial uh, investment but that is not the only thing where we should also look at the something called life cycle cost what does it take like if something we are building for 100 years what does it take for that 100 years how much uh, money we will require, not just in the uh, beginning. Something which costs, let's say, 50 rupees in the beginning, and if you have to repair every 10 years, so every 10 years, if you want to put 10, 10, 10 rupees like that, uh, you know, so for 100 years, it will become uh, 150 rupees or close to that. Uh, whereas if you invest, let's say, 75 rupees with a better product in the beginning and no repair after that, so I, the life cycle cost of the second option is just 75 rupees. Whereas in the first option, in the beginning you spend 50 rupees, but later every year, you are, I mean every, uh, let's say 10 years you are spending. So the total life cycle cost becomes 150, which is double than the first option. So that initially when you invest, we have to think, can I put 10% more money and get a lower life cycle? So for that doing the life cycle cost, one must also tell uh, what is the uh, you know target life expected. So that's why I started with that uh, talk because usually <coughs> in the tender documents, we don't talk about how long I want. If you are building a house, let's say your own house, do you ask the builder or the consultant that uh, I don't want to repair this house for another 50 years or another X years. We don't ask that question. Do we ask? Just think. Do we ask that question, how long my house should last? When we uh, buy, no, but you know, imagine it's not like cell phone. Cell phone I can replace. It's not very, uh, very, it, it is not going to affect my life. But if I, may, if I end up in replacing my house, it's going to affect my life, you know, whole lifetime earnings is put into that. So we have to do some, we have to really think about the life uh, of the structures which we are building. And like he said, even the interior, that also add up to a very large amount, you know. Uh, now this reminds me, um, like, you know, about two, three decades ago, if you are talking about the building a structure, uh, 
most of the work will be on the you know concreting part to and then uh, maybe 10 20 like you know 10, 33 decades ago if you think about there will be a light there will be a fan somewhere right that's it today you have so many other Amazing. things just look at this room around so many other things and which add a lot of cost uh, to this so if you any of these things you know they cost <laughs> the cost is very high so earlier the cost of the skeleton was 70% and the remaining things may be 30% and now it is reversed. Is it true that building will come up very fast but the finishing is going to take much longer so and costly. Many painting companies they are claiming that uh, they are providing weatherproof uh, paint. So will it protect uh, the steel bars inside the concrete? Mm -hmm. no. Not enough. See that's mm -hmm. a, again we should not quote in my opinion if you ask my personal opinion we should not coat the steel rebars with anything which can be scratched very easily while walking on top. Uh, so we call it abrasion resistant. Okay, so if you rub it with some rough thing, it should not go. So galvanized steel, if you rub it, nothing will happen to that. It will not get scratched like uh, uh, epoxy coating or like paint you said. Paint, you should not put paint on rebar. They should only use another metal or a very hard material which will not really get scratched or damaged. So that's one thing. And you know, if you talk to metallurgist, they say painting is different, <laughs> coating is different. You don't, they, they won't accept uh, <laughs> this. Uh, the, these two are two different terms, right? I mean, you can yeah, have yeah. these right here yeah, because painting is only a barrier protection. Yeah. Barrier, it's a barrier protection. Whereas the uh, zinc and steel, you know, by galvanization, they are metallurgically being Bonded. connected through mechanical locking, you know, so they diffuse <laughs> into each other. So that's the benefit of a metallic coating. Regarding the government policies, I will say government is uh, quite aware about the benefits of zinc and the galvanization of steel. Yeah, why? Yeah. Why? Because the critical infrastructure like the power grid, you know, the transmission lines, the railway electrical catenary system on which the engine runs, you know, it draws the power, the crash barriers on the highways, these are 100% essentially galvanized across India. But when it comes to the RCC construction, that means reinforced cement concrete construction uh, for constructing a bridge or constructing a, you know, a small something road or something then government is very flexible they give ample choice you can use this material you can do use that material and there the specifiers they do generally you understand the specifiers the pwd officials so you are from media if you write that you know that government should construct infrastructure which should last which should last for 100 years without any maintenance, without any accident, because a lot of bridges, you know, you must have uh, read in the newspaper or heard that during the monsoon season, these bridges collapse. So many persons died, right? So that's not right because uh, in India, life is very cheap, right? Very cheap, nobody bothers. But had it been a developed nation, then there will be a lot of you and cry. So you should ask the government officials to use those sustainable materials which can give longer life to the structures. So what about the reserves of zinc in India and India's global standing in terms of zinc reserves? Oh, we have uh, ample, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Before yes. getting into that, I want to, because we'll keep the question because it's a little different. See, uh, one mm -hmm. thing I want to say, like, you know, if you want to take out some key words from this discussion today, uh, one thing is any tendering or, you know, when they place the contract, I would suggest the first sentence, if we can put, what is the corrosion-free service life? Corrosion-free service life for that structure. And also, uh, you know, we should be able to uh, ask the uh, engineers, if they will say, yeah, it will last 100 years. But we should ask on what basis you are telling that. Okay? So the main problem is like when you talk about structural or mechanical uh, behavior, I mean structural capacity, 
day one of the structure, we know that it is going to be there because vehicles will go, so we know it is not collapsing. But durability, when we talk, we need decades to prove it. So that is where science comes into the picture, and then we have to study how the concrete's properties are, how the steel's properties are, and how they are, you know, when you put steel in concrete, how they behave, and how that is going to affect the life of the structure. So these are two different things. One is, uh, if you think, one is about mechanics, the other one is about chemistry of the materials. So we have to also start focusing on chemistry of the materials which we use. Now zinc in concrete, it works very well than steel, like you know, when you put the zinc coating on the steel, it works very well uh, in terms of the chemistry. So they don't really create much problem or it doesn't lead to corrosion. That is how we are getting uh, long life, even without doing anything to the concrete. We are only changing the steel, that interface between steel and concrete. So that's what we are uh, really uh, looking at. So the key word here is enhancing or increasing the corrosion free service life. Don't use the word service life alone, because service life somehow, see even when we get sick, we will keep on taking medicines and we will live for longer. Right? But the hospital bills are also very high. <laughs> right? So our objective is reduce the hospital bills and then make sure that you are healthy, or the structure is healthy and then last for long, as long as we want without major maintenance. Okay? So contract documents are the key here. We have to bring in this word into the contract document, corrosion free service life. So every structural engineer, when they approve a building or you know systems for the building, they should look okay. at corrosion-free service life and how do we... So I know if you are going to write something, I want this word in that, corrosion-free service life. Let us start talking about how to control corrosion. To control corrosion, zinc is best, uh, you know, one of the best uh, technologies available is uh, by use of zinc as a coating on the steel rebar. Uh, now we also have other uh, technology where zinc can be used is called cathodic protection where uh, for the existing structures, not for the new structures. Existing structures you will see a lot of structures, I know in Chennai also we have a lot of structures which are facing corrosion. We can insert some of these zinc pieces into the concrete and connect it electrically to the rebar and it will protect. You can extend the life, it will stop corrosion of steel. Today, if it is corroding, I bring this small piece of uh, zinc, uh, we call it galvanic anode, you drill a hole, just a hole, you don't have to remove concrete cover and all that, drill a hole, put it inside, tie it with the rebar and then that can give you another 20 years of life without any corrosion, another 20 years. So imagine you have a building or your house which is already 30 years old and now it is experiencing corrosion and I, I want another 20 years, you just do this. You don't have to remove everything and rebuild your house. This is something very important, cathodic protection using zinc anodes. How many government departments are using galvanized? Very, very, very limited. Very, very limited. That's why unless you bring in this corrosion-free service life into the contract document, these things will not happen. So we have to like, our target is that. So when you put that into the contract document, all other things will fall in place. Then the engineers will start thinking, now how do I make sure that will happen, right? So, but if you don't put the target, it is very difficult, you know. So that's where we call, and the, another keyword I'm telling, usually we say prescriptive specification. Like we say, if, if you're making concrete, we will say how much cement to put, how much aggregate to put, how much water to put, all that. I don't care about that. What I take care is how that concrete will be. You put whatever you want in your concrete, how the concrete will behave. So we call it performance specification. Not prescriptive specification, but performance specification. If you want an analogy, let's say you go to a doctor. Do you really care what is inside the tablet you get? Do you really care what is inside the medicine which is given? We don't know what is inside, right? But we take the medicine based on the trust on the doctor and the trust on the uh, you know, medicine which we get. That is looking at the performance of that medicine. So we don't look at what is in. So when you buy concrete, why do you want to know how much cement I should put, how much this thing I should put? I want to know whether that concrete will last for 50 years or not. Right? That is the performance we are looking. 
So I am giving this medical analogy to uh, you know. So uh, in terms of uh, stainless steel, there are a lot of grades. Like that, zinc also uh, grades are there. Because uh, some steels they corrode immediately, some steels come for that. Like that also zinc, GA also in grade is something like that. Usually we go for 98, 99% there are grades, but uh, yeah. you know. Actually, zinc is formed in a metal formed uh, in a smelter. So different smelter have different type of percentage composition. So in India, generally two or three types of zinc is being manufactured by Hindustan zinc. One is prime western grade that contains 98% zinc. And another is special high grade zinc that is 99.995% zinc. And third one is continu uh, continuous galvanizing grade. So in that they, it contains 0.12.2% aluminium. Mm -hmm. And rest is aluminium. Uh, uh, rest is zinc. So yes, but zinc is a metal. You just you can make an alloy of zinc, and there are several type of alloys. Yeah. 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 I have one more point there. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, generally, zinc, uh, since it is an element in itself, if you want to have a longer life, you increase the thickness of zinc. So you got 80 gsm, 120 gsm. So increasing the thickness is the solution to give it longer life. Right. You had I yeah, just wanted to ask, uh, what is the reserve of zinc in India and what is India's global standing in terms of zinc reserves? Uh, yeah, so, but, <laughs> I mean, Hindustan zinc guys, they are sitting there, but okay. Uh, zinc, as you know, it comes by way of a ore, a spotlight, and in India, reserves are very concentrated, especially these reserves are being found in Rajasthan area. However, in other areas also, uh, you know, exploration has taken place and uh, we have found new key reserves. As of now, uh, India have got reserves of next 25 years. So, we should not worry about the scarcity of zinc. But what about the global standing in Glo terms of uh, zinc resources? Zinc resources? Yeah, yeah. yeah so, Exploration keep on happening. For example, the world's largest red dog mine, you know, that was being shut and now underground mining is taking place. So new mines come up and the old mines get closed. So it's a phenomena. So there are several new mines which have been found in Peru region, in Zambia, South Africa region. So I mean, it's a continuous job and as such, uh, world have got abundance of zinc reserves. So what percentage of zinc used in India is imported? Is imported? Yeah. So India got a market of almost a 1 million tons of zinc per year. Mm -hmm. Hindustan zinc produces almost say 7 or 800,000 you can say 800,000 tons of zinc and rest 150, 160,000 tons of zinc is being imported. So why it is getting imported? Because India has got free trade, free trade agreement with few countries like Korea, Japan, and uh, Korea being one of the dominant producer of zinc. Obviously, you know they take advantage of FTA thing, and that's how zinc is being imported. How big an exporter is India? India is also exporting zinc to, India, to this FTA countries and to neighboring countries like Bangladesh. Southeastern countries, Middle East. Zinc is a global commodity, right? So uh, the commodities do not have any barrier. So they can export zinc to any cu customer who is based in North America. What about the zinc ion battery? Zinc battery. Yeah, so zinc energy storage solution. That's a new phenomenon. You must have seen, everyone has seen the ever ready batteries, the Jeep batteries in the torch. What's that? That's a zinc, zinc battery, right? So we are seeing those type of batteries right from our childhood. But recently, uh, we are more concerned about the lithium ion batteries because now EV vehicles have started coming in the market. So International Zinc Association is uh, working with various universities and various companies. Uh, who have come up with the breakthrough technology in zinc energy storage solutions and very soon uh, especially the grid storage solutions that means uh, you can store power during the daytime from the 
PV modules and then supply electricity during the night time or when required. Also, it is very ideal for uh, you know <laughs> server applications because these servers they require power power backup and zinc has proved to be one of the best material rather better than lithium ion batteries. Also, few experiments have been done on the passenger vehicles and two wheelers on zinc battery energy storage solutions and results are quite impressive. So I think there are two companies, Enzing and uh, I'm forgetting the second company's name and they have come out with this uh, uh, batteries for uh, you know two wheelers and four wheelers. But is it as effective as lithium? Can it deliver the same amount of power? Oh yes, oh yes. I mean the problem with zinc batteries as of now because still it is in the evolution stage, right? So a lot of uh, new things are happening. So problem is the initial torque, right? So for acceleration you require high density of charge. So that is the only problem. But when it when the speed gets stable, stable, I think zinc is rather better than the lithium ion. And uh, moreover, zinc batteries are quite safe. You have heard a lot of incidents of lithium ion uh, EV vehicles uh, getting fire, but uh, we haven't. Uh, heard anything about the zinc battery, so it's quite safe for the passenger vehicles. Also, cover this medical part, medicines, zinc. Yeah, yeah zinc. We are mean, talking about yeah. other things. Let's <laughs> talk about. Yeah, <laughs> especially the, you know uh, during COVID. COVID. Yeah, <laughs> during COVID pandemic, you know, when there was no vaccine, obviously zinc was considered to be one of the main medicines, you know, which increases the immunity. So that we can naturally, you know, fight virus. And there are several medicines like Vikasu, Z Plus, Zincovit, so many, all the pharmaceutical companies, you know, they have, yeah, it's a huge market. And Zincovit, I think, Apex Pharma, they are based in Chennai only, right? Zincovit. And they were the highest OTC grant once during uh, COVID time. So, yes, and why? We require zinc because unfortunately 50% of Indian soil is zinc deficient. Ideally zinc should come through our natural food cycle. That means the plant absorbs zinc from the soil, they transfer it to the leaves or to the fruits and when we eat those vegetables or fruits, then zinc automatically go inside our body. The uh, How zinc works? Every human being have to take zinc on a daily basis. We eat zinc and we excrete it out daily. But till the time zinc stays inside your body, it increases your immunity by four times, right? So that is the key to the COVID fight. And uh, I think zinc saved a lot of life. How safe for the zinc factors to be used on this? Like some of the people are... Ended six phase. One problem with termite infiltration is that you generally don't see them working. You will only see the outside layer of the wood and till such time it is not possible to repair, you don't see it. So the problem is termites operate very, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, clandestinely. You don't see them. And when you actually find them, it is too late. Now, in, uh, other problems which you face in you know, typical household uh, furniture is, you know, you have fungus, you got uh, hardware getting loose, etc, etc. Now, there are multiple problems which the customers face, which can be actually uh, resolved if you go with a metallic solution. From a customer's perspective, if you look at it, you look for these uh, characteristics in a product, you know, the functionality, the aesthetics, durability, ease of maintenance, then uh, how cost effective it is. This is actually where zinc and galvanized steel has a big advantage because this is the only material which can actually provide something which is similar to a wooden uh, structure cost. Now, uh, I will just talk to you about the brand which we launched. It is called Metallo. And we are into interior solutions, primarily into kitchens and uh, wardrobes and you know similar products. So, uh, it looks extremely good because it's all painted and uh, nicely finished and the advantage is that you don't have any of these pain points which we mentioned in the beginning. No termites, no hardware uh, problems, you, practically this is something which will last for next 50 years without a problem. 
we gave a warranty of 20 years, but uh, it will last for 12, you know, probably 50 years plus. We have done one, I mean, of course, we have not done something like what the IIT can do, but we did a, you know, a salt spray test, which is actually the most standard test which is done to evaluate the corrosion performance of a material. As per the BIA standard, the corrosion uh, test is done for, I think, 94 hours or something. All the material which we tested, stainless steel, GI and uh, powder coated GI, all met the requirement. But what is of interest is that, you know, the life of powder coated GI was 240 hours plus. Which is like more than three times the recommended uh, period, but even then it was still uh, having no problem. The sample number one here is actually galvanized steel with powder coating on it. So it's practically indestructible and uh, if you use uh, products made of this material, for the next 50 years you will not have any problem. So I just thought I will show you these images so that you get a better understanding of the problems involved. For the 50 years, I should not be doing any structural repair. Just like we change cloth every day, painting is fine because that is more, more to do with the aesthetics of the uh, structure. We change cloth every day, but our bone and flesh we don't change every day. So we are talking about bone and flesh. When you talk about concrete structure, the main concept of uh, today due to corrosion. Now that is primarily about steel structures. But in our day-to-day -day life, the loss is actually much more because steel is not the only material we use. And we are talking specifically about the interior, your home interiors. The most commonly used material inside your home is actually wood. Your cupboards, your furniture, your doors, your windows, everything is manufactured in wood. And uh, again, the concept of cost of ownership. You years, 30 years or 40 years when you are going to use that residence, you need to keep on spending money. And the reason is, uh, you know, it's a fight against the weathering elements of nature. Corrosion, put in simple terms, is basically oxidization of metal. Steel is primarily iron. Iron in its natural condition excesses iron oxide. So, Nature has a tendency to bring back things to equilibrium. Same thing happens to wood. Wood, the main problem which people face is actually termites. I am sure most of the people here technologically beyond connected to mechanical logic. You know, so they diffuse <coughs> into each other. So that's the benefit of a metallic coating. Regarding the government policies. I will say government is uh, quite aware about the benefits of zinc and the galvanization of the steel. Yeah, that's why? why I yeah, to why? That. Because the critical infrastructure like the power grid, you know, the transmission lines, the railway electrical catenary system on which the engine runs, you know, it draws the power, the crash barriers on the highways, these are.